This clip is brought to you by SaveWithConrad.com. Uh, let's pick up where we left off. Uh, we just talked about world wrestling all-stars and we talked about that pay-per-view in Vegas, but the first time we saw any world wrestling all-stars on American pay-per-view was January 6th. And that's the, uh, the October inception pay-per-view in Australia, but it's finally airing here in the States. And your dad had a journey intro, uh, easy for me to say <laughs> a journal entry that day that says Jeff asked if I could come to his house to help him with a business plan to present to a potential investor for a pro wrestling venture. The plan is a wonderful plan and the, and eliminates the difficult and costly weekly broadcast wrestling show, which is used to promote live events and build interest for pay-per-views. The plan is to produce 52 weeks of pay-per-view. So lots to unpack here. First of all, you the whole damn story, there's a lot to unpack here. Just to, what's fascinating is, is you reading that and just thinking from, I'll, I'll call it sort of the casual fan. Uh, but first off, you said what a, a, a thing, a, a concept that, that is so foreign to me. I've, you know, Memphis TV, 90 minutes. We got to break it down into an hour. Raw's two hours. Then it went to three hours. Smackdown's two hours. This, you, you have a live event. And yes, you're not having to mark times, but you don't want to keep them past two and a half, three hours. I, I've, I'm indoctrinated on hitting marks times yeah, yeah. And, and here you are flipping the, 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 the script, so to speak and say, Hey bud, we're going to go until we go. So, uh, but, and, and then you reading that from, it's not like it's a, 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 a biographer, uh, maybe yeah. So, yeah, that, that's my father writing that and, and him writing in his journal that I'm going to go present a business plan. That's, I, I guess I'm just really, uh, framing it in my own brain. So yeah, a lot to unpack. Sorry for the sidebar. <laughs> no, 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 listen, I'm glad to do it. And, uh, by the way, just before we get rolling, we threw out all the rules with something to wrestle years ago. When we first started that podcast with Bruce Pritchard, they said, Hey, don't go longer than an hour and don't curse and, uh, don't front load ads and promotion for all your own stuff. Well, anybody who listens to my stuff realizes we ain't doing none of that <laughs> and it served us well. And we're going to continue to do that. And you know, here's the thing. When, when the show starts to drag me and you get fatigued or the content starts to suck, we'll, uh, as y'all used to say, go home early, but <laughs> in the meantime, let's just keep it rolling here. Let's talk about January 6th. Mm -hmm. You've, um, we talked a little bit uh, last week about your frustration with Andrew McManus over the whole Randy Savage thing. Is that what leads you to having your dad come over on the very day that the pay-per-view is airing January 6th and Talk to me about this potential investor at that point. Did you have someone in mind or is it more of a, let's just form a business plan of what it might look like. Yeah. It's form a business plan. And, you know, as my memory begins to get jarred and, uh, you know, th th thoughts come up in my brain and all this, you know, the, the, I could remember in the summer of no worries thinking about you know, when you're out on the lake, you have so much time to sort of let, let things digest. And then I go from that to 9-11, which obviously is a world, you know, a, certainly a national tragedy. But it put, you know, kids that weren't around during those times. You know, it just 9-11 was huge. And I, yeah. I can remember getting on a plane and traveling and thinking, wow, I'm pretty grateful that I can go back to work. Because, you know, the world stopped for yeah. a week or so. Um, but, but going from the summer of no worries and lots of time on my hand and then diving in and, uh, you know, the process of, of, of working with Andrew and doing the tours and doing Australia and that, you know, that was hard travel. I loved it, but I'm not, you know, certainly not complaining then or now. And then the UK tours and, and I'll say sort of like, okay, what's the next phase of my career. Um, but, but going back to putting things in, in sort of like full context, like, okay, Vince just bought his competition, which says a lot. Yeah. Maybe the company wasn't running on all cylinders by any stretch, but it was still a very, not one, but two high, highly rated shows. And now it's over. So the television world was not looking favorably upon, um, I mean, society in a lot of ways, you know, I, I said, it, you know, church, uh, folks at church last week. I don't know if I mentioned that on this podcast or another interview I did, you know, I had people wherever it was, you know, the attitude era and, and some of the content 
uh, turn people away. Uh, and it's certainly uh, a old time Warner for them to cancel the shows and, and to give the opportunity. And as the news began to slowly uh, get out, um, it was just really interesting. Like, okay, what are next steps? And then going on those tours and, and me, you know, not only my talent hat and, and wrestling fan hat, but, but a promoter hat thinking there's a real opportunity here. Let's dive in and figure out what, what are our real opportunities? What can and can't we do? Uh, again, you, you said the entrepreneurial spirit, that's it. L let's look at things. And my dad, you know, growing up, whether it was a car lot or selling case knives or land or whatever kind of crazy hobby or side business he got into, uh, he was always up uh, for talking business, always. And so let's, uh, you know, let, let's sit down and chat and probably watch the pay-per-view and, and talk about life and talk about the industry. And, you know, he was knee deep in his construction world. So uh, just like, okay, wh what's going on? I, I want to pick your brain. Maybe you're going to bring something out of me. So, and we have done that off and on for years. I mean, I remember riding back from Memphis TV when I was a first year in the business, he'd say, what'd you think? And I kind of knew it was a loaded question. <laughs> I'm like, Oh boy, what's he really asking here? But just talking that, you know, he, he that's, that's a way of educating. And he would continue to say, look, I, I, I won't, I want you to tell me what you think. And then let's talk about it. Not, I don't want to tell you what I think. I know what I think I wrote it or Lala wrote it, whatever. So just having business conversations about uh, the industry. So your dad was your go-to to bounce off business ideas at the time. Certainly right up there at the top. Yes, yes, yes. Let's sort of set the stage here for your dad. Well, I guess you too. You're 34 here. Does that sound right? Yes. And your dad's 59, no longer in the wrestling business. He's gotten into the construction business and he's had some really big years. He's been working with BP and shell stations to sort of re-image them. And he wrote in his book that his projections for the year 2002, uh, were $15 million in profit by comparison, his best year in the wrestling business was 1.2 million. Um, given his current lot in life at the time, why do you think he even considered getting back into wrestling? Did your dad have the, uh, the wrestling bug? It's been said that once you have that in your system, you just nearly impossible to shake it off. Was that true of your dad? Do you think? Without question. And you know, at different stages, and I'm not just saying him, many folks, especially as the years go by, you know, he, he at the time he can say, Oh, I want to get back in. I hate the wrestling business, but I'm only doing it for my son, Jeff. Right. Or I hate the wrestling business, but you know, my partner needs me. That's a rationalization. That's a justification. That's a right. minimization of life. It, it, there is something and, and, um, I have seen this, I have heard this since I was a, a young kid, there's something unique about our industry that, um, whether it sucks you in Conrad, you can attest to this. It's, I, I just think it's really, really fascinating because life imitates art and art imitates life. There's just something that John Wayne went and played a cowboy, uh, Bruce Willis or Tom Cruise, you know, it's Hollywood or, or Bill Cosby. And uh, I don't know. I'll date myself. The friends cheers, uh, walking dead, any TV show. It's a TV show. Ozark. I love that. I mean, that that's, those guys are playing roles. And then in the sporting world, you know, LeBron James, he steps on the court, Michael Jordan, the best of all, when he stepped on the court game face, ours is sort of this quasi you live it 24 seven, but if you live it 24 seven, you're going to get yourself in trouble. It's just kind of a real unique industry mm -hmm. that once it gets in your blood, I, I I've, I've seen very few people truly walk away from it. Um, maybe, maybe not make their living at it, but walking away, there's few and far between not saying it can't be done, but definitely few and far between. Do you think part of your dad's thought in wrestling is maybe he missed the big money in wrestling? I mean, don't get me wrong. He's probably one of the first millionaires in wrestling, but he made his fortune selling tickets to live events and really, a, a, an economically depressed area, but he missed out on all the pay-per-view money that helped Vince sort of go to the next level. Do you think he looked at Vince's fortune and, and what this business had become and thought, what if do you think he wanted to sort of prove that he could do it to himself or to others, or 
I guess I'm just struggling with, if you know, you could make $15 million in your real business and your best effort when you were on top of the world before was 1.2, it can't just be strictly business. You're here to have fun and prove a point or what do you think of that? It's not about the money. A hundred percent. Um, I, I think, um, uh, my dad's always had a real knack of making money. Yeah. And so that hadn't been the, the, the uphill climb. But he's also uh, a, a guy that's candidly um, family, friends, um, whatever. He had no problem pushing aside. He was going after his passion. And if money was a byproduct of that, I mean, he'd get into uh, horses and go from not owning a horse to I'm going to own nine. He, you know, Morgan horses. At, at one time, he had two or three of them. And, and one of them was the grand, grand grand champion you know once he followed his passion he went all in and so you know the 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 bp shell reimagining line of work that he got into that just i don't say stumbled into it but one thing led to another i don't think that was his passion yes make a lot of money not sure him uh reimagining old gas stations into new ones quite had the sizzle of i used to run memphis tv in wmc studios and got paid to do that when no other promoter in the country was doing that. That was a rush as a business. And Conrad, you can relate to, you know, successful business deals. Yeah. But from, you know, like you said, selling out Mid South Coliseum and Louisville Gardens and Nashville Sports Arena and Evansville and all that to up and down, up and down, up and down. But like you said, very little toe in the water uh, as far as him steering the ship or being ownership. Now, when he went to Vince in, in the early 90s and then consulted for WCW, it was a, a different line of business, a different business model. You know, we came from the weekly and you'd run the garden in those days, every three months, uh, every two months, you know, that's, that's the big, big live event. And then the tours once a year, but everything was built around, you know, in, in that time, early nineties, as you know, the big four. Uh, so the pay-per-view money. So, you know, as a, at the time, I didn't consciously think about it, but if you, but when you look back on it, absolutely. Conrad, he, he wanted to, okay what's this industry look like now? And, you know, um, 59 year old man, you, you look at Colonel Sanders and, and, and the list goes on and on about guys that, that Uber successful into their sixties and seventies. And, and he had some uh, buddies uh, here lo locally that were his, his mentors, um, uh, that, that, you know, so, so he, he was, uh, incentivized to, okay, let's try something different. The foundation of telling a story, and I've heard this over and over and over, and I believe it more today than I ever have. The foundation of the industry of telling stories and emotional connection has always been there. Sure. Oh, back then it was real. No, it's fake. No, no matter what it is, the foundations of our industry are truly the same today as they always have been. Yes, it's different flavors and social media and digital. And, and I know I'm getting off on a tangent here, but yes, he wanted to dive in. Um, and, 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 you know, we, we, once he, I think he knew that, okay, I'm serious about this and January 6th, he was like, okay, let's talk about this. What's it look like to be clear. The original idea of 52 pay-per-views did come from the boat trip with Bob Ryder, right? That is where the, the whole concept is. How do we tell weekly episodic stories, Instagram, YouTube, <laughs> that, that wasn't a thing. So when TV's not an option, like it's not an option, you know, Ted Turner built his business, Andy Griffith, Atlanta Braves and professional wrestling. Yeah. That network canceled like game set match with not good, but I think very good, maybe not great because it had fallen down, but still very good comparatively speaking. I think thunder was still the top rated show or top five rated show on TBS and Nitro on, on TNT. So anyway, the television wasn't an option in 2002 under any circumstance. Not even, I think you could probably stroke the big check, got on at midnight, but that's about the only time slot you could get. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you can notice any time we upload some new content. And go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a fund of your loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money. It's a matter of how much. Find out right now for free at SaveWithConrad.com.